next. D. D. Jacobs O'Neill. Hi. Since, since I told what your name is, you don't have to say what your name is. I know. Does, does anyone know my name? <laughs> Speak into the microphone if you would, Dee. Right. My name is Dee O'Neill, and I've lived in Haverhill since 1993, by choice. <laughs> um, the Hannah Dustin statue is a monument to American history, Massachusetts history, and the very history of our home. The statue overlooks the Merrimack River at the Grand Army Republic Park, where veterans of wars are memorialized. This happened at the end of the King William's War, the event. And let us not forget, Haver was under attack. This woman was captured on her property six days after giving birth, taken by men by force and weapon. Hannah, her baby, and her nurse were kidnapped. They were assumingly to be sold to other tribes as slaves. It's quite likely they were raped, abused, and mutilated during their captivity. Things this woman witnessed, including the death of her own baby, were incredible. She was a victim, as her infant daughter were, as many others were. In today's world, she may be considered a prisoner of war. There were 13 people kidnapped that day after watching 40 members of their own community being violently murdered. <clears throat> Whatever means they found, they took they found necessary, they took to escape. There were no rules in those days. Some may consider the means savage. However, that was typical of the day and commonly used. And yes, Massachusetts did pay her, uh, her whatever. Um, and this is not a fable. The, native the natives and the colonists, this was an attack ordered by France for the French Canadians and Abacani warriors to attack us. This family was invaded, evaded upon, and many were killed right here in our backyards. Nearly 200 years after the event, the statue was erected to commemorate her escape. And for me, it represents family and what lengths a mother would go through to protect her family. It re she represents strength and resiliency as a woman. I see a mother giving a stern warning to invaders, do not mess with our children. And I would like her to stay right where she is. In Haverhill alone, we have streets, nursing homes, veterans chapters, clubs and organization, and other registered historical markers dedicated to Hannah and the Dustin family. We have living ancestors of Hannah. And we're not here to give a history lesson. I'm here to attempt to protect a monument erected for a woman who had strength courage and resilience. I'm here to protect the memory of a neighbor, maybe an old one, but still. She was a member of our community here in Haverhill to protect a snapshot in time to remind us what the somberness of war is. And that's it. And do you have the petition with you? or I already do have it, but do you have a petition you want I do not have it, All you right. do. And at last check, I think there was 1,640. How many? 1,642. Electronic signatures. signatures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, petition. Okay. 76 pages. That was to keep the monument in place? To keep it in place and to change just that. The petition says to change the offensive language um, around the monument where it refers to savages and whatnot in that language. Uh, and the petition says to uh, put a QR code on it that would give a more accurate uh, explanation of the history. That is the petition that I saw that you had submitted to me. Right. And that would be the petitioner's hope that that would be done. Right. Okay. Thank you, Dee. Thank you. Sir, you want to be next? Come up and state your name for the record. Oh. <laughs> your name for the record. Bill Taylor. Welcome, Bill. Thank you. Esteemed committee members, I wish not to speak for them, but I gather that those who favor keeping the Hannah Dustin statue in GAR Park see it as a symbol of resilience or even righteous vengeance. I don't see it that way. I view Dustin's story as a horribly violent one and belonging to a very dark chapter in our country's history. <clears throat> 